Hey everyone, in this video we will discuss about places or scenarios where Power Query is not a great tool. So let's start. So when is Power Query not a great tool? Uh, in let's say, so the first case is there is audit and traceability. So in case you want to audit or uh, make ensure traceability in your ETL process, uh, Power Query is not a great tool with that. So it doesn't log anything. You can manage it with R and Python components, but it's not um, the best way, it's probably a hack. So in case you need audit and traceability in your ETL process, Power Query is not a great tool. Um, probably best to discuss with the auditors around this one as well. Second one is high performance. So Power Query does well if you're building a proof of concept with small data sets, but it doesn't scale up really well if you're doing a lot of or bulk of your transformations using Power Query. So uh, it's you don't want to use Power Query if you're looking at high performance on high data sets. Then you've got too many steps. So the third one is too many steps. Essentially, if you've got any any transformation that you do using Power Query, you will add a step in your ETL process or in the Power Query steps. So if you've got more than 20 steps, it becomes really convoluted. And if you look at the M code, it becomes really difficult to decipher anything. So uh, if there's too many uh, complex or if there's just too many transformations, this is probably not a good tool for you. Then if then else condition, Power Query doesn't support any form of if then else conditions. So for example, if there, if your data set is a certain way on, depending on a certain condition, you want to perform one transformation and perform another transformation depending on another condition, uh, Power Query will not be able to handle it. It's not a great tool to handle this. There are hacks around it, but I would not recommend using Power Query. And the last one is uh, failure handling. Power Query does not handle failures gracefully. So let's say you've got two gigs of data and you're running some transformation and there's a failure after let's say loading uh, 1.5 gig of data it will there is no way to have a checkpointing or anything so you can restart it you have to reload the data again so it doesn't handle failure gracefully so these are a few scenarios where you don't want to be using power queries if you need audit and traceability if you need high performance with high data sets if there are too many if then else conditions or if there are any if this then else condition because it just won't handle them well too many steps this will convolute the m code and it's very hard to follow and it doesn't handle failure gracefully. So a couple of things to think about in case you know, you're looking at Power Query, um, why Power Query could not be a good tool in certain scenarios. Um, it's meant for ease of usability. It's not, and it's meant for proof of concepts, but it is not meant as an enterprise ETL tool. So I hope you find this video useful and thanks for watching this video. Please do subscribe to my channel and like my videos if you enjoy what I'm doing. Cheers, bye.